This lesson is going to review wound healing. The main goal is to review the phases and the major players that participate in healing a dermis that's been sliced. Primary intention, where you have an epithelium, it gets cut and it puts itself back together. We'll see that a lot of the things that come up in wound healing, building new blood vessels, burrowing through extracellular matrix, laying down different tissues, proliferation of cells, comes up as features of neoplasia. But here, I want to show you how those things are supposed to work to restore an organ after it's been injured. We're going to look at the different phases of wound healing, identify the major players, the active cells, and I talk about the pathogenesis or the mechanism, what's going on, and then a little bit about what could go wrong with wound healing in each phase. The first phase is phase zero, hemostasis. Some people don't believe in calling it a phase. Some people wrap it in with phase one. But phase zero, to me, occurs in the first 30 minutes. When the dermis is cut, skin opens, the blood vessel gets nicked, starts to bleed. The major players in the phase zero hemostasis are the platelets. What they do is form primary hemostasis, which then allows secondary hemostasis to occur. Primary hemostasis is the formation of the platelet plug. Secondary hemostasis is the fibrin clot. Now we discuss this in great detail once we get into hematology, so I'm not going to go too into this now. But the purpose of this is the epithelium has been separated, exposing the underlying tissue. Eventually, it's going to form back together, but that takes time. So one, we need hemostasis. Actually, stop the bleeding. Two, we need to prevent dehydration. The clot on top of the skin is the scab, and that serves to regulate free water losses. The epithelium should do that, it will do that, and in between is the scab. And the most important part of platelets forming a clot is that it acts as scaffolding for the rest of wound healing. Now, if you have problems with bleeding, platelet disorders, factor disorders, you're probably not going to have a problem with wound healing. You're probably going to continuously bleed. So I don't consider this, this phase to have a problem of wound healing, but if you do have a bleeding disorder, it's going to be tough to clot. So the disorder you might encounter is bleeding disorders. Phase one is the inflammatory phase. This occurs from as soon as the wound is created to about day three. The inflammatory phase actually is in two subphases. The first inflammatory cells to arrive are neutrophils, and neutrophils predominate the wound in the first day. Then, one of the jobs of the neutrophils is to summon in the macrophages. Macrophages will be present through the maturation phase from 24 hours on. Neutrophils primarily are going to secrete lytic enzymes. They are going to digest any foreign particles or bacteria for invaders. What they're really used for is the forward scouts, right? They exit and they marginate through the blood vessels first. They get to an area and say, ah, yep, got a problem, and they release cytokines. Those cytokines take circulating monocytes and have them migrate into the tissue where they become macrophages. This is done through cytokines, released by neutrophils. 
The macrophages then, primarily, are there to do phagocytosis. All of the stuff that the lytic enzymes started to degrade, all the bacteria, the neutrophils killed, the macrophages come and sweep up. The macrophages are also there to send the signal to the fibroblasts. Macrophages released fibroblast growth factor, which actually helps bring in the cells of the next phase. The way I see the inflammatory phase is in response to almost like an invading army. The wound is made. The beachhead is broke. The invaders enter. They cause some damage when they land. The neutrophils are the forward scouts. They enter the invading territory first, and they start picking off key officers. Now, the invaders have caused some damage, right? All the civilian territories are destroyed. But now that their officers are gone, the, the invaders are sort of in disarray. Already, the platelets have sealed off the area so no new invaders can come in. And the macrophages are the shock troops, the heavy armor, that come in later because they're slower. But once the neutrophils have, st have picked off those key players, then the macrophages move in and decimate everything. It crater the entire place. All the invaders are gone, but so is everything good. Once the shock troops are done, once the macrophages have cleaned the slate, they send the all-clear signal to bring in the civilians. The civilians are going to be the farmers, engineers, construction workers who can't fight for themselves. So the macrophages hang around just in case any more invaders enter. More importantly, the work they're doing is very tenuous and energy consuming, so that if there were any invaders taking shots at the civilian workers, the whole thing would fall apart. Neutrophils, Ford scouts arrive first. Macrophages, shock troops destroy everything, clearing the base for the civilians to come in and do their work. And having cleared it out, they summon in those civilians with fibroblast growth factor. Wound healing problems at this stage are probably primarily going to be related to the immune response. If you have a foreign body, especially one that's bigger than the macrophage, neutrophils can't break it down, macrophages can't eat it, bacteria can crawl along it. Foreign body is going to prolong wound healing. And here also, infection. If the patient fails to keep the wound clean, and introduces new bacteria, well, it's gonna have a tough time fighting it off. Lastly is vitamin C. The evidence is better for vitamin C than it is for zinc. The idea is, but not, still not that good, the idea is that vitamin C helps metabolically active macrophages fight infection. It's cheap, very well tolerated, so it doesn't cost anything to do. I just, we just don't know how well it actually works. Once that all clear signal is given, Phase two begins, and phase two is the busiest phase of all. That is the proliferative phase. The proliferative phase is going to last from day three to day seven. Macrophages have cleared out the wound. Now the fibroblasts move in. The fibroblasts secrete fibronectin. Fibronectin acts as an opsonizing agent, which facilitates macrophages phagocytosing foreign elements and acts as chemotaxis for more fibroblasts. So fibroblasts feed forward more fibroblasts coming in. Fibroblasts secrete vascular endothelial growth factor, which we'll see used down angiogenesis in just a second, and the fibroblasts at this point are laying down collagen-3. Collagen-3 is being laid down across the wound, parallel to the basement membrane. This is in its contractile position. It has no tensile strength. This was our intact epithelium we made a cut. The collagen is being laid down parallel to the basement membrane, perpendicular to the wound. 
that so that its cousin, the myofibroblasts, can wrap around the wound and squeeze it together, contracting it closed, attempting to oppose the edges of the wound together. The myofibroblasts have myo in them, like a muscle. They look like fibroblasts. They're effectively smooth muscle. 